Every Magic the Gathering set has at least one card that is truly horrific, and Double Masters is no exception. Greetings! Owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles, I hope the day finds you well. We are here to talk about a specific Double Masters spoiler. If you can even hear me over the clickety clack of you slamming down on your keyboard, this card is not awful, I hate your guts, you don't know anything about magic. Slow your roll, slow your roll. Wait until you find out what I'm actually talking about before you freak out too much, okay? I, I'm guessing you're probably a popper player who's super jacked about this being included because if you didn't know, the card we're talking about, which I have the older version of on the screen, Oubliette, or I've also heard it pronounced Oublier, like maybe as the French pronunciation, I'm not sure. But anyways, Oubliette is what we're dealing with today. Now, this is a card that for many popper players is an exciting include because as you can see on the screen, the original printing of the card comes from Arabian Nights. Arabian Nights is Magic the Gathering's first expansion. That was actually when they were considering doing expansions with different colored backs. And Arabian Nights would have actually had this kind of garish pink and purpled back. It's pretty, pretty pinky purplish. Anyways, so Oubliette was created all the way back in Arabian Nights and popper players have been clamoring for a reprint of this card for decades. Now, we're going the historical route. I'm going to show you the older version and we're going to move up to the Masters version, right? And what's really cool about this card is if you remember the Avison video that I did a few days ago where I showed you Avison as a ghost and this was the end of her journey, the Oubliette arm artwork almost feels like we're working in reverse. So what we're seeing here is in this artwork depicted is in a way to me older than the artwork we're gonna see for the original. Now, the idea of an oubliette is it is a prison. I mean, if you take a look at the artwork, it's pretty straightforward, right? You've got a dude here who's clearly been here forever, right? Just, just essentially left to rot. So an oubliette is a prison, but a specifically designed type of prison where there is only one entrance and exit and that is yet like generally just a hatch in the ceiling now it can be either like a solid hatch that lets no light in or it can be like these sort of bars almost like a sewer grate and that allows the captors to take a look in and if they want to if the guards want to jeer at the people in there or just dump garbage on them right it allows for tracking the prisoner better and also harassing them essentially if you so choose right now a lot of these a lot of these oubliettes would actually be designed in a in a way where you wouldn't really be able to move around in them that much so this is actually in in terms of them this is a bigger than usual oubliette but that's fine i mean obviously it's still pretty horrific the concept of oubliette basically it's based on the french word to or the french phrase to forget or forgetting so the idea is you essentially dump them in a hole and just forget their existence, which is really just, just an awful way to go. It's one thing to be a prisoner who's caught in a prison and you know they're gonna do something with you or whatever. Either they're gonna set you free after a certain amount of time, something's gonna happen, you're surrounded by other prisoners, something like this. But this combines, like, uh, what's, what's the term for it here? Solitary confinement. It combines that with this also sort of utter hopelessness of knowing you're never getting out of it. It's got a very medieval feel to it. Now, in terms of the card itself, you, what you'll want to note, and it may be difficult to see, this card actually costs three mana, two black and one. There was an issue with older printing cards from Arabian Nights where they had, some had darker mana circles than usual, which makes it seem like the card is cheaper than it is, but it's literally three mana it's an enchantment now we're going to look at three different wordings of this card through through the ages this is the original wording back when magic hadn't really found the best way to word things so it says select a creature in play when oubliette is cast that creature is considered out of play as long as oubliette is in play hence the creature cannot be the target of spells and cannot receive damage use special powers i love that I love the phrase special powers. I don't think 
there is any other card in the entirety of Magic the Gathering that lists abilities, like activated abilities, as special powers. That's what they are, but we're all used to like the, the more cleaned up technical game language. So I really enjoy that special powers phrase. So, hence the creature cannot be the target of spells, cannot receive damage, use special powers, attack, or defend. All counters and enchantments on the creature remain, but are also out of play. If Oubliette is removed, creature returns to play tapped. So, essentially, what this card is doing is it's taking the creature in its current state, removing it from the game, which is currently known as exiling, right? Removing it from the game, but keeping track of all of the different states that exist on the card, and then when Oubliette goes away, bringing the card back with like in the exact same condition it was in, right? Except for the fact that it does bring the creature back into play tapped, which is an interesting little side note. So this card is interesting on a whole bunch of levels, aside from the awful dark flavor of the card, right? What's interesting about it is, first of all, that if you look at this ability, it feels very much like a white card by today's color pie. You know what I mean? Like exiling creatures specifically as a way to handle them, but if you get rid of the enchantment to get the creature back, is a white temporary dealing with it kind of situation. White can destroy creatures outright, but they have to either be attacking or tapped. They have to meet some particular conditions. Otherwise, white can just use something along the lines of banishing light. But even if you think of banishing light, that's an enchantment where essentially you're being banished off to some other zone, but you can return and you're just being banished in a ray of light. And Oubliette is just withering away and wasting away. Like in a way, there's a disconnect in the flavor of the card where you're being put into this stasis. But in a normal, in like even in the artwork, you can see that the individuals, their life is over, right? Like, so how, how exactly does the magic for this function? Do you end up like stuck in here, rotting away and just like, is this guy still somewhat sentient in this artwork in terms of, even though he looks completely withered away, is his mind, his essence still trapped in that skeleton, just kind of screaming into the void? What is going on here? Like, there's an extra level of horror where it just, you will rot away under the normal processes and your body will stay there, like essentially skeletonized or mummified, depending on how you want to look at it, with your mind intact, just waiting for the magic of this place to be dispelled. Like with white magic, I picture it, you being put into a void of almost non-existence. So like you could be caught in the banishing light and you could be in there for a hundred years, but when you returned, you wouldn't feel it at all, right? You'd have no idea. It would be like a split second went by, like almost like you were in a coma. Whereas with the oubliette, it feels like the flavor is, you feel the time, you feel the effects in your body, you feel thirst, you feel hunger. None of that can be quenched because you have nothing. Slowly your body gives out, and yet, in a way, your existence refuses to end, and you're just trapped here in your own mind. And even when the enchantment ends, unlike the Banishing Light, when you come back, you remember it all. You're returned physically whole as if that whole experience didn't happen, but you're mentally damaged from it. And that, to me, is what the creature coming back into play tapped is. The absolute horror of having endured this torture basically leaves them feeling like hey, they're just despondent and unusable when they first show up. They're just so traumatized by the experience. And that, to me, is absolutely incredible flavor, right? Now, this card did have a couple of iterations in terms of in, uh, I believe it was 2007, they made a digital version for MTGO. And you can see here when you look at this, they've kind of enhanced the colors like a little bit. You know what I mean? It's a, it looks a little bit richer and the artwork's like, a, it's a little more stretched out, a little wider. The text though, look at the text box. What a wild difference. They had changed it. It says, when Oubliette enters the battlefield, exile target creature and all auras attached to it, Note the number and kind of counters that were on that creature. A lot of bookkeeping to go along with your Banishing Light. And it says, when Oubliette leaves the battlefield, 
return the exiled card to the battlefield under its owner's control, tapped with the noted number and kind of counters on it. If you do, return the other exiled cards to the battlefield under their owner's control attached to that permanent. Now, this is different than the original card, because understand, these are triggered abilities. So it does actually change the functionality of the card. The way the old Oubliette worked originally was, you just kind of put it off to the side, and then once Oubliette goes, you just put it back into play tapped and leave it the way it was. But with this variation, what happens is you bring the creature back into play first, then once you do that, you get to return the other exiled cards on the battlefield under their owner's control to that permanent. So the creature comes back first on its own. So there's a point where basically it only comes back as half of what it was. So when it comes back, it does have the, um, the counters still. Like it shows up right away with the counters, but not with any auras attached to it which is a really weird, really weird experience. You know what I mean? Where you go, okay, like it shows up right away. It's got this half, but not the other half. And then you go, okay, I have successfully returned it. Now I bring the enchantments back. Like that is some weird and clunky wording, right? So now when we have the newest updated version, they're able to take advantage of the fact that they have returned phasing to the game. We saw it on Teferi with M20, M21. So for me, I mean, I admit it was a little bit of a head trip to read the new wording of the card and go, huh. And then you go, actually, you know what? That works better than the previous fix. So the current updated wording of Oubliette is as follows. When Oubliette enters the battlefield, target creature phases out until Oubliette leaves the battlefield. Tap that creature as it phases in this way. And then it's got reminder text saying, auras and equipments phase out with it while permanents are phased out they're treated as though they don't exist. So phasing is very similar. It's very similar to being exiled, but it's not the same, right? Like basically when something's exiled, there are a few cards in Magic that will let you reach into the exiled zone so you can still interact with them. But that was never the intended functionality behind Oubliette, right? So changing it to phasing makes perfect sense. And it also helps to differentiate it from the white exiling abilities. Because honestly, when it like each creature, each color has its specific defined ways that it can interact with creatures and either destroy them or not destroy them. So, for example, blue is the worst color at destroying creatures, and black is the best color at destroying creatures. Because black has straight up cards that are just like pay two mana, pay two mana. Destroy any creature except if it's a merfolk or except if it's got a counter on it. Well, like with minor conditions or for three mana, you can just outright destroy a creature. White's only allowed to destroy creatures as punishment. Red can use burn to get rid of creatures. Green has to use its own creatures to essentially fight other creatures. And blue can't do anything about creatures aside from steal them or delay them in some way, kind of like paralyze them with ice magic or something. So this honestly, Oubliette, doesn't feel like a black card at first with the other wording that they used as the second wording, but when it comes to this wording and changing it to phasing out, I feel like it gives this card its own identity while also maintaining as much of the orig original functionality as possible. So this to me is definitely a smoother variation. And as I said, when we look at the artwork, it's kind of the reverse of what we saw with Avison. This to me, is like basically you can take the original Oubliette art and consider that the guy in this artwork is that same individual just earlier in the process. If you take a look, we have the same kind of like iron grating. Now, I guess in the most in the most technical sense, the previous artwork does have more bars. So I'm stretching it a little bit, but I do like the idea of the flavor of when the like this this is a more recently crafted or not maybe recently crafted, but recently consecrated Oubliette. Like, basically to me, the idea behind this is you have your prison, you have the metal grating on top, it's all ensorcelled, but to make the magic work properly, each time you consign a new being into the Oubliette, you have to set up these like magical sort of like, it, they're not quite flaming skulls. It's like they're, it's like, blood and mist energy is kind of raising up off these skulls 
And the way it looks to me is almost like these skulls are placed along the bars and there was probably a consistent amount across the entire thing, like one on the end of each bar. But over time, their magic has faded and the hand's been able to reach up and kind of like shunt them off to the side. But that's just false hope. It doesn't matter if you tamper with the skulls or the magic that's like infusing the bars. You're still going to be trapped in there. It's just kind of like it's part of the magic. At first, those those skulls infuse their magic into the cell. And at a certain point, sure, you can get rid of them, move them, push them away. But all that magic's already been, been infused into them. And that's what it feels like with the skele the skeletal heads all along the edges, with the energy that's flowing up off them also flowing out into the bars. It gives such a hopeless feel. And just the, the arm reached up. It's like a plaintive sort of save me from drowning. Save me from my fate. Please. Don't let me languish and be destroyed down here. Don't let me wither away. It's so dark and awful. You know what I mean from the perspective of the person in there? It's so dark and awful, and I love it. It's such great flavor. So let me know what you guys think about all that in the comments below. If you're a big fan of flavor and magic lore, I do have another channel where I've just released a new lore video today. Feel free to go and check it out. It's called Fantasy Geographic. I'll link it in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing here, comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff is great for the channel. Share the video around. And if you love what I'm doing, then jump on my Patreon and be part of the list of awesome names that are scrolling by me on the screen as I'm running my mouth. Thanks for coming by, everybody. I will see you all soon.